So hope you are able to see the screen. It has not changed. Uh, and let's get into the next lecture. So this is lecture number. Forty four. And we're going to uh, on today's date again, eight, 12, 20, 21. We're going to understand today and importantly, what does this attractive effort? And its variation as function of what is called a slip. Or that's called a longitudinal slip or breaking effort. Effort as function of. Skid. So as we have seen in the last lecture, uh, there are three conditions of uh, the rolling uh, tire free rolling, uh, rolling due to driving torque and uh, decelerating due to breaking torque. So the tire subjected to uh, driving torque scenario is uh, responsible to define uh, your uh, slip and uh, uh, breaking torque when you apply uh, analogously you will have a term called a skid. So if you are understanding this, uh, um, you would be able to uh, express the variation uh, or the generation of uh, these forces at the tire road interaction. So that's my objective of uh, this particular lecture. So let's look at this uh, uh, to begin with. Uh, what is the behavior of tire during these two important scenarios? One scenario is applying driving torque. Another scenario is applying braking torque to the tire. So look at here this uh, circle. Um, two circles represent your tire wheel assembly with the rim. And uh, M W is what is the driving torque that is applied on the tire. So when the driving torque is applied, there is an elemental length L is looked at here. And that length uh, would be uh, reduced uh, here um, by uh, due to the compression of your tread. So when you apply the driving torque, you get into uh, this uh, uh, reduction in the length of the tread because of uh, the compression that would be induced in front of the contact patch. Uh, there is a part of line and uh, in the contact patch in the adhesion zone, this compression remains constant. And here the zeta, what is there appearing? Epsilon, what is it? Sorry, not zeta. Epsilon, what is appearing is what is compressive strain. So that strain is what is there. So you see that uh, the equivalent, equivalent translatory progression. Equal and translatory progression of the CG location for one revolution is different. So for a free rolling tire, uh, it would be more compared to the tough uh, uh, tire subjected to driving torque because of this compression of your tread during the application of uh, this torque. And you can see here the normal pressure is not symmetry, it is skewed, and this FZ is coming here with this offset distances. Right? <coughs> so it is it is it is primarily because of your rolling resistance hysteresis that you have seen. So though the torque is applied, you see that uh, it is uh, uh, it was symmetry when it is non-rolling condition. The moment you apply the torque, you have this brought in here, right? Uh, so that is accounting uh, accounted by your rolling resistance force here. So that is not here explicitly shown here rolling resistance force uh, for the convenient here. Maybe this affects what is there here is uh, uh, what you have to look at. So there are assumptions when you have to develop some theories. And uh, um, one important assumption by the yearly theory proposed by Julian, uh, that's Julian's theory, it is called by his, the, the researcher name itself. Uh, uh, we will look at that theory uh, with an appropriate uh, assumption made by him. Uh, to understand this uh, beforehand, let's just define our uh, slip longitudinal slip or longitudinal slip ratio in textbook it is called and this would be since uh, the equivalent translating uh, translatory progression is smaller than that of a free rolling tire. So free rolling tire uh, you have your. Um, uh, uh, the velocity so free rolling tire uh, uh, referring to r times omega is what is an equivalent translatory distance whereas your um, uh, v at this contact uh, v at this center of the tire 
would be smaller than that. So this difference by r omega is what is defining the longitudinal slip, longitudinal slip into 100%. So what do you mean by 100% slip now? So 100% slip means you look at here, that is representing a spinning of B, 100% slip represent spinning of the wheel. What do you mean by spinning of this running wheel? That's because of V going to be zero. So there is a situation when you apply the driving torque, but uh, the wheel center is not translating, but it is spinning with the omega and that is corresponding to 100% spin. So in this V becomes zero, where this V is now defined by RE times omega, where RE is effective rolling radius. So uh, remember this effective rolling radius is smaller than that of free rolling radius. Free rolling radius without subscript the E with the subscript E refer effective rolling radius and that become effective when you apply either driving torque or braking torque. Otherwise the radius that you consider is free rolling radius. With the free rolling radius if it completes uh, then uh, the equivalent translated distance and uh, this uh, new, uh, uh, this is will be zero R omega equals V that's the free rolling state. But driving state uh, uh, R omega is greater than B. So when R omega is greater than B, the difference uh, for this R omega is what is defining longitudinal slip. And this slip is requirement to generate your attractive force at the contact path this FX. But uh, the same slip is going for uh, more and more. It's 100% that, uh, that cannot uh, have any attractive force here. It is spinning. So that is going to spin and that is the meaning of it. On the other hand, look at this uh, braking torque when you apply, uh, the same length is getting enlarged at this zone uh, of adhesion in the contact patch and in front of that, no, see, you see it is stretched. The stretching in this is going to give the equivalent translatory distance R omega, right, is going to be smaller than V now. So V is greater than that. So that is why you define your skid now, I subscript S. That's called skid. And that would be V minus R omega by V. So 100% slip would be realized in an icy surface or grease surface. Or you see on a mud road, no, you are driving your vehicle, you apply your accelerator, but it will be spinning, it is not going forward. And that is that 100% slip. We don't prefer this. We'll understand in a while why. On the other hand, uh, when you look at the braking uh, torque is applied, you have the skid defined, uh, that's V minus R omega by V. What do you mean by this? You would see that wheel locking. So 100% skid now, let us understand. 100% IS means uh, your wheels are locked, omega becomes zero, omega equals zero. When omega is zero, this term is zero, so V by V is one answer, 100% it is. So what does that mean? Uh, there is no rotation of the wheel, but you have your V present. And that is what is called the complete sliding of your tire on the ground. So there is no rolling action, but the tire is skidding and sliding. And you could see that this happened in an emergency braking and the wheels lock and the tire uh, mark is uh, made on the asphalt road and highways you could see. So that is what is sliding. The vehicle is uh, translating because of tire sliding. Contact patch is not having any slip. It is sliding 100% and that is the scenario. So that would happen uh, uh, if you look at uh, under the normal driving condition, the tire is not going to go to 100% spin as well as tire is not going to have 100% skid. So you would have uh, uh, both of them present in the scenario in both the driving torque applied as well as uh, braking torque applied. So what I mean by that, this contact patch would have zone of adhesion as well as zone of sliding. Both would be present. Uh, uh, that is that uh, beauty of characteristic of pneumatic tire made of this rubber uh, composite uh, material, right? And that's why it's popular and universally accepted for vehicular application for its uh, motion. So I hope you have understood the behavior of tire at the moment. Now let's uh, look at uh, what are this uh, uh, tractive effort uh, variation as function of slip or braking effort as function of skid. So for that, uh, I just look at uh, look at this slide. Next slide. You can see here again two graphs are there, and there are two equations here. There is equation 
one on this side and there's an equation here. So what does this graph represent here? See, track T effort. So your FX, which is in the tire uh, contact patch uh, developed. And as function of longitudinal slip, which is I, we just now defined what is I. So you can see that the variation of this as function of slip is linear from point O to A. This is a straight line. After that point to A, you see this is going to be a curve. It's a non-linear variation. And it goes to this peak point uh, that would be corresponding to mu P times W. So you can see here till point A, it is just half the value of mu P times W. And the maximum value that is possible uh, limited by road surface coefficient is mu P times W. So if you look at this is the zone, if your vehicle is operating, you would be able to get more of tractive force. And that zone is limited by 20% slip for a passenger cars. Right. So you see here uh, uh, it is uh, the slip has to happen, but the slip should not go beyond this value corresponding to point B. And that's a maximum slip value permitted. And if it is going slightly more than that, also what will happen? The rapid fall of this to a sliding value, mu s times w. So mu s times w is what in rigid body mechanics you have looked at a block sliding on a slope. So vehicle is uh, uh, then behaving as a block and then uh, uh, wheel lock, so it's on one unit is sliding down at that time it is mu s times w and so on. You know the theory of this. So this would become an unstable state for your vehicle. Right? If all wheels are locking together, maybe the sliding would go in a straight line, but it is not so. Uh, then you know what are the scenario we have looked at in longitudinal dynamics already. <laughs> so uh, this force fx here is going to be now look at function of mu p times the load and you have here some ci. So the ci is what is called longitudinal slip stiffness. Longitudinal slip stiffness. So this I here is longitudinal slip ratio or slip. What is that here? Uh, that is only is defined as uh, I is equal to R omega minus V by R omega. Uh, just now we have seen. Right in percentage, but the, here you may not put it in percentage in this equation. And uh, this is expressed. How this equation comes is very interesting. That's what is that theory. So I require one single equation, this equation now. It is now a non-linear equation and it's limited by the maximum value of mu p times w. So within this 20% uh, i, this equation holds good. So I have my equation which fit exactly OA region as well as AB region. As well as AB region. Right. So you see here there is some value IC. So what is this IC? Critical value. If I replace this I by IC, this equation this is going to be half this mu p times w. And you can see here C i is tan theta. So C i is nothing but uh, this stiffness. So how does that is been defined? The C i is defined as uh, <coughs> this tractive effort derivative as I when i tends to 0, that means the slope of this. So that is what is this and that's going to be tan theta of this curve. And this curve, if you look at, for a given load is this curve. If the load is increased, this curve would be going up like this. Like this. Like you could see on the right-hand side, the graph of breaking effort as function of scale. You can take one alone here. And you can have the influence of this because of load. As the load increases, you see this is uh, increasing. So here also you can see there is CS. CS is what? It is skid stiffness. Skid stiffness of the tire. Like uh, you had uh, your FY is equal to C alpha times alpha. What is this? It's a cornering stiffness you have seen. Similarly, now you can analogously look at your tire longitudinal stiffness is called longitudinal slip stiffness during driving torque applied. The same is called skid stiffness during braking torque applied. And if you critically look at these two equations, you see that this I is what is now different in both. Right? So the relationship I, the modulus value would be same as 1 minus Is by Is. So if I replace in this I by this, I get this equation. 
and uh, of course the ci is replaced by cs that stiffness uh, terminology is different otherwise these two equations are the same equations and which can fit for a given load w one of this curve in this case right so this is that uh, the classical variation of the tractive force that is developed at the contact patch uh, as a function of slip it is variation or breaking effort as function of skid it is right so this is what you have to understand so here uh, now the question is how are these equations are developed and that equations are developed by the theory proposed by julian julian theory julian's theory so let us look at the julian's theory uh, and then uh, we'll proceed further uh, with the tire model so i i have not derived these equations i am going to do that in my next lecture and explain you uh, or, or explain you to feel how these uh, uh, physics of uh, the interaction of tire with the road and uh, the deformations basically because of uh, an elasticity nature of your tire tread there is a deformation the deformation is uh, compression in case of driving torque applied the deformation is tension stretch in case of braking torque applied so this deformation is what this longitudinal shear deformation of the tread and it is along accompanied with the shear deformation of your side wall and these deformations are responsible in an adhesion zone to generate this first part of this part of the force and the second part fs fx s here you can see and that is because of the sliding zone that has been taking place uh, the rolling action and it is driving torque supply so the trailing end of the contact patch would have an initiated uh, with the sliding and the sliding would be progressing so it, it is very clear now <coughs> till point a you see it is complete adhesion on the road there is no sliding zone uh, so the limiting value of your tractive uh, effort and the adhesion zone is dictated by this value half the value of maximum possible so something more than that when i goes the corresponding i is what is critical slip value slightly more than that then it is been accounted by the sliding zone of the contact patch so the sliding zone of the contact patch is uh, depending upon how good uh, the adhesion of tire with the ground and the adhesion zone of your contact patch is uh, primarily depends upon the elasticity nature of your tire tread material so this is what is that uh, and more to have an insight of uh, this uh, variations so if you have understood this uh, all points whatever i'm making it today for you it's easy for deriving that uh, simple uh, strength of material approach and um, that is an elementary the good old theory and those theories are further modified and you no know, uh, and there are uh, uh, experiments are conducted the experiment result and an appropriate theory blend and hybrid model and there are um, tire models empirically been brought into as commercial usage and one such in uh, popular model what is called a horse project model or otherwise called a magic formula model and that model you have one equation that equation can fit for tractive effort breaking effort or side force that is lateral force or self aligning torque all uh, can be uh, expressed through one single formula that's why it's called a magic formula so we would see that uh, both the cases of this and between we will also have to understand the theory like for longitudinal force development for the lateral force development the same tire model is been considered uh, unlike uh, julian's consider as the elastic band of uh, uh, tire Uh, the string model would be considered uh, proposed by Temple and Van Schippe, and they propose how the the, uh, the theory supports that to understand the development of uh, lateral force and self-aligning torque. And if you have understood these basic theories and those basic theory with some <laughs> experimental result and you no know, progress, if there are many researchers uh, come out with their modified uh, value of um, the formula and so on. But however, it is the behavior cannot change. The trend of diagram cannot change. that's what the theory proposed and the theory is not going to change and it is going to be more and more fitting to the uh, true value that that's developed uh, at the tire and those tire models are an um, important tire models and uh, for vehicle dynamic simulation for uh, further to explore uh, the dynamics part of our course that we have learned longitudinal dynamics left dynamics and right dynamics and so on right so at this point i'll stop of today's lecture and next lecture i'm going to Uh, derive this uh, uh, equations shown in this with julian's uh, simplified model approach 
and then we will look at uh, uh, temples and Manshapi theory uh, discussion only, not to get into more detail of uh, deriving of that. And then we look at the formula, uh, which is called the magic formula uh, tire model, and that would be useful for accounting, uh, combined cornering and breaking effort and so on. There's an, another tire model called Siegel model, uh, which is similar to that of Julian's approach only, where you are going to have uh, longitudinal motion as well as your cornering combination. So the theory is developed and based on that, uh, the equations are developed and I at least require 10 hours of lectures to explain all of them. But uh, that is for a master's degree level you can study. But for your uh, uh, course, uh, undergraduate level, the understanding of physics is much more sufficient uh, for our course is concerned. And you are so much excited or interested in knowing those equation derivations you can refer back to my video lectures uh, uploaded in YouTube. Uh, uh, there are some 14 lectures of uh, 13 lectures of uh, mine are there. Uh, that would help you to further to understand more detail these derivations, right? With that note, I would just stop uh, today's lecture. If you have any uh, questions, you can ask. Right? Any any doubts? Any questions? If not, let me stop recording. <laughs>